What's up, guys? Welcome back to part three of the automated special. You'll notice we're missing Kent. He had to step out for a second, but he'll be back shortly. Without him, though, in his stead, we're going to talk about design. And so design, you guys, is that like design of like how we architect something or how we design a solution or what exactly are we talking about in this design uh, example? I think for me, it's everything. It's like, like if I were to think about my house, like design a house, which color to pick, like what, 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 is, what defines me is how I'm going to live. So oh. that's, you know, there are different flavors of design. There are different do's and don'ts for design. And most of the time, whatever you design you came up, you implement, you have to live with it for the rest of your life usually, right? Ah, so it's very okay. important to take it from a philosophical perspective into a pragmatic perspective and then see, okay, keep the freedom as much as possible in your design decisions because you will down the road have to make different choices. And, you know, depending on how flexible you have been from the beginning, this will dictate how how much freedom you, you have from diverting of your uh, initial goals. And I think that's absolutely true for automation as well because um, we are touching so many different, you know, uh, components, like we said before in another video, where I said, okay, we have AAD, then we have the Azure uh, subscriptions, we have uh, cloud flows, we have desktop flows, we have RBAC, we have uh, Dataverse entities, all those things, they have to play together, right? And if we too tightly couple them, couple them together, this will lock us down maybe later on in, in, in extending and promoting this uh, further. And that's, I think, what we consider uh, the design principle and design thinking about you know solutions okay okay so it's a lot about what do we choose when and why do we why did we choose that at that moment exactly okay okay so like what's a uh pranav what's a practical example of that i think a good good example here is uh it is you know i've come across uh quite often especially as uh, we've gone into the rpa spaces uh we found that Excel is a very common, you know, tool that people have been using in the automation space. Uh, like, and I love Excel as well. I'll use Excel as my CRM every day <laughs> if I could. <laughs> and often enough, you, you know, uh, what happens in this case is uh, if you're doing automation over Excel data, uh, it could be you are doing end of the day reporting where you want to, you know, add one more line or end of, end of day, day of sale close. Uh, the question then becomes like how do you automate like how do you write into that excel file and uh, based on we you know where folks were when automation started there were different tools available at different points in time you know, back in the days uh, we just were punching numbers on our notebooks we didn't even have excel and then we had notepads we had word processor technology change and then we had uh, like excel sheets and we we're entering data into it and we started automating those Excel sheets. So at some point, we automated using manual steps, and so that became automation. Uh, then we started having APIs. You know, we have the whole graph APIs and the Excel APIs, so we could use APIs to automate those as well. But then we started to realize, in some of the cases, we don't have access to the APIs either because the file is blocked, or it's a third party, it's a vendor file. And then we realized, all right, what's an intelligent way of accessing that file if if I don't have APIs? Then we try to do some of this UI-based automation as well. Um, so now from a design perspective, what it comes down to is like if somebody comes to you with an automation that involves Excel, what do you what do you pick? Like and how do you decide which one to pick? And that sort of becomes, you know, that's one of the sort of design principles that you have to think about in the automation spaces. Uh, uh, which tool is the right tool? And, and uh, you know, it depends a lot on like who's going to use the tool. Like, is the person does the, does they have the capabilities of using the APIs or using the UI? Which what tool sets are available? I mean, there are a gamut of factors that sort of go into it. And you know, even with just this one little swim lane of Excel, we can talk about it for hours. Like, and mm -hmm. uh, but that's the essence of you know spending time in this design phase is just to figure out these these blocks and and see where you stand um, yeah. as yeah. a team and as an organization like so so let me ask apostolus so why would that make a big difference right if i start with excel and you know i want to use apis to to automate it but later i find that you know maybe maybe i needed rpa and i just want to change over like why why is it a big deal to make sure that you take care of this ahead of time rather than 
you know, be reactive to it? I mean, you know, if you if you if you know already that there will be features you will be required to implement later on down the line. So let's say, for instance, in the Excel example that you would have to call custom VBA code or you would uh, like to, you know, uh, run some of these CEOs largest Excel sheets. So CEO stands for chief Excel officers. There are so many <laughs> in the world, I guess, right? We have seen them all. And all the, let's say, our our shadow IT folks, right? Everybody is uh, worried about running, you know, ERPs on Excel. So, and and we know we will be facing those kind of situations, right? Yeah. Except if you are doing some very basic stuff, if you're reading, you know, Excel uh, Excel table out of a sheet, and you know, okay, this is only to feed some operations later on down the line, but. If you know already that the majority, you know, of users will be leveraging a very advanced Excel sheet, for instance, then you might be better off to go uh, the Power Automate desktop route, where there's really uh, some deeper uh, support for macros and these kind of things. That and I think sense. that's a design principle. You know, you will do mistakes always, and I mean it's a nature, right? But don't lock yourself uh, in, and that's I think the most important thing. If you can already foresee. Exactly that they they need to be some configurability and some you know uh, you need some space later later on make sure you have thought about this two or three times now Excel might not be you know this uh, groundbreaking uh, uh, redo thing but if you are talking about data models especially in DataVerse if you are doing custom logging automations these kind of things there you would have to really think about you know the foundation and then you can build almost any any house on top of that. Uh, you would like later on. I like that. That's a that's a good analogy. I think, um, you know, to to just add on, I think it's important to try and build once and build right. Right. I think yeah. that a lot of things that we see um, patchwork only lasts so long. Right. A, a bandage on the dam only holds yeah. it for so long. And so yeah. I think you nailed it at the end there. Building a proper foundation, understanding the landscape, making sure that everything is set up so that you can build high and tall on top of it. It's uh, it's paramount for sure. OK, and so uh, what are some common tactics that uh, that some that companies could use that individuals use to really try and, and get what the right decision is? What are some of those patterns? I think this is what uh, where the fusion teams come in, where we say, OK, we have not only fusion devs, but really fusion teams and multidisciplinary teams, right, where you have architects, designers, you have architects, you have business folks, then you have IT and governance folks, and setting those guardrail and the foundation right from from folks who understand the subject the most. If you are an architect, for instance, you know how to connect systems, then uh, you would want that architect to, to do the design for exactly this integration, right? And if you have uh, an IT pro who is responsible for audit, auditing, locking, security and tracing, then you have these folks taking care of that part of the foundation. And once they have concluded with all their expertise, okay, this is the foundation which we can put now guardrails in the hands of citizen developers. This is where the real magic can happen, right? And this process, it's not easy. We all know we hear, okay, citizen development and so on. Citizen development is easy to, to implement, to implement it right. It takes time. And I think for those fusion teams, if they work together, there's really the, the biggest opportunity going forward for, for uh, uh, citizen development. And we have all the capabilities and all the foundations from a platform perspective in place to succeed in that space. Nice. Pranav, That's anything great. to add? Key point, John, like often enough for design, we think about just like, hey, you know, I have these six scenarios that I'm going to automate this year, and maybe like there's five from a future direction perspective, but it's, it's a fossilist point. It's about a team, right? Like, like it's, it's not a So, what what your design is not about what your features that you want from a product. It's all about like what, what is the end to end scenario that you want to solve, both accounting for both upstream and downstream impact. So that's why design is very critical to sort of think about and for it'll help you form the right teams, not only right, you know, help you write the right code as well. Like that's the key over here. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So I think uh, what I'm hearing is make sure if I, if I were to sum this up for for someone watching, I would say the first thing is make sure you've thought through the implications of where this must live and what will connect to it in the future. Number one, 
Number two, make sure and understand where you want the data to live and how you want it to flow. Number three, understand what advanced features and capabilities you'll need to support. And then number four, make sure and put all of the guardrails and restrictions in place ahead of time because I think what I liked, what Apollos, Apostolos said was, citizen development is easy to enable, but it takes time to enable it right. And so I think that, you know, if I were to sum up what you guys just said, it's probably those those five things. Did I, did I get it right? Absolutely, yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. Okay, so I feel pretty good about that as our number three episode. We we didn't show any slides, but I don't think we need any. We had some good conversation that wrapped up all the ideas, and it felt pretty good. You guys feel good about it? Sure. Yeah? Okay, cool. All right, guys, so that's it for number three. Be sure to join us for the next video.